All right, this one is called uh, the Lightroom editing tutorial. Now, I preface this entire video by asking you to just give me some grace because I know a lot of photographers and um, photo editors are actually quite sensitive about their editing. Now, I don't claim to be the world's best photo editor or anything at all, right? Now, I'm just gonna show you how I do it, and then if you have any problems, then that's great. This is how I do it. And I'm very fast at it, so um, let me try, <laughs> try my best to encourage you. What I'm doing is, I got my laptop, I got my laptop open here, right? Now, uh, I use this little um, SSDs, external hard drives, right? USB-C, stick that in the, in the USB thing. Now, what I've done is um, shot a whole service on my camera, right? Now, on my camera, it might be a slightly different for you uh, on your model, right? But what I can do is open up the photos and I'm scrolling through and looking at them all, right? Now, I can press this function button in the top corner and uh, it actually flags the photos. Now, you can Google those custom key functions on your camera and see if that comes up for you. But what we do is the star rating. Now, I've set my camera to star rate three stars whenever I tap that button. So I'm gonna go through, and this is something that I do between, you know, maybe the start of the, um, the sermon and the end of the sermon. Gives me about a 15 to 20 minute uh, little window there where I can go through and um, start flagging the photos before uh, I'm, you know, ready to edit. Now I can go through and I can choose different pictures and then just by that function button, clicking on my favorite pictures. Now, once I'm finished, turn the camera off, grab the SD card from the camera, put that into my computer. Now, all you gotta do is open up Lightroom, press import, and uh, on this left here, you've got the SD card, right? Uh, you've got the preview window, and you've got your destination. Now what I've done is I've inserted that SSD, I've is inserted the SD, and now I can see on the left, I got my import location, my preview, and then uh, my destination. Now I'm gonna put it into hard drive here. Now I'm gonna always name it the same as our smug mug file naming structure. It's 2022-01-01, Sunday service. Now I'm gonna press import. Now for this example, I didn't actually go through the starring and um, select all of the different photos. I wanna show you how I do it, right? Because I was the photographer and the editor, it's actually really helpful. So what I can do is go through and I do it really fast and I, I work it on a rhythm actually. I go through and then try and find um, the best uh, expressions and the best um, sort of movements for those different things you know, maybe people are standing, how they're holding themselves, um, where they're looking and that sort of thing. Now, I, I've got two hands on the keyboard right here. I've got uh, one finger on the number three and the other hand is on the, um, you know, direction arrows there as I'm going through. Now, I, I go very fast and I go through and try and, um, try and find the best um, pictures for uh, what I was trying to capture or what I was trying to communicate in those things. So. Um, I can go through and then find these fun moments. Um, now, there's a little dancing moment there. I really like that. Now, the MC gets up. And we you know, go back up to the grid, press G for grid. And then maybe I like this one. Yeah, I like the mouth closed. Now, I'm pressing three, pressing G for grid, going back and then, um, I know that I've got a good one right there, right? So I can scroll through, find a different photo. See, Gabby's got her head down. I don't, I don't like that. So I'm gonna find a good uh, spot where Pastor Ben is looking good. Maybe uh, Gabby was looking up at another point. There, that's a good photo. Now I don't, I know I don't need too many photos from this section. So once I know I've got what I needed, I can move on. Now. Keep scrolling through. Got a prayer moment here. This is actually Pastor Mark's mum. So really nice moment there. I'm gonna grab that one. And then uh, 
positive moment praying to someone and yeah all right we got uh campus pastor on stage closing worship into that mc section uh, you can see the pictures are all loading as i'm doing it um maybe a photo like this yeah that's good all right now i know i've got that one Oh, Pastor Mark comes out, and then let's look for the right moment. Now, expression is very important for um, these uh, sorts of things. So this one, he might have been breathing in at this moment or something, but it looks like he's shocked or, you know, um, confused or something like that. You know what I mean? So I'm looking for the, the nice moment where he looks um, triumphant or like presidential or something. You know what I mean? So I'm trying to represent him well. Now... I still haven't got that. Maybe that one. Uh, I haven't got the exact moment yet. Now I keep having a look. My, my camera shoots probably like 10 frames per second or something, right? So, um, yeah, it, um, I have a, an advantage that I can shoot off a whole bunch of different frames and then choose them later. Um, yeah, okay. This is nice. This is nice. Uh, he looks a bit mean in that picture as he's concentrating. Oh, that's a good one. Okay, I've got that one, three. And then uh, victory pose. And then hands together shows like a uh, genuineness. Always like looking at these symbolism in these pictures, you know. Uh, hands together, illustrating a point, grabbing the pulpit. And then I, I switched to the wide angle shot and then um, I pulled out to get those um, wide angle photos from the room. There you go. So I always look at the lights in the roof, like fit in the room. I look at uh, where the empty seats are. Um, and then I flip the camera around so you do a vertical shot. Maybe I put that one on the Instagram story, for example. And then I'm just, I'm just playing around with the composition. See the difference between these two? Look at the lights in the roof. And then, yeah, um, I, I switched the long shot and then um, zoom in from afar. Now he's got a bit of a weird face there. So maybe I'll choose that one instead. And then hands open. Now I know I've got a good one from that whole section. So then I probably don't need any of these. And then we've got one finger illustrating a point. I like that. That's really good. Ooh, okay, I got some foreground action in the in the front there. Uh, hands up, illustrating a point. I like that. He's driving a uh, point there. That's good. Now go back to the grid. Let's have a look at this. Okay, that's good. Number three. I like that one. Now scroll through. And then, ooh, I went onto stage. Here we go. This is must be right at the end. There's three. And then, I like that one. That's good. Yes. Okay. All right. Now, mm. all right. We got we're at the end moment here. Three. We got Zeke in the front there. Responding in worship. Oh, that's really nice. Ooh, eyes closed is probably better. And then you got um, Pastor Mark in the foreground and then Zeke in the background. It's a nice image, nice memory. All right, what we got here? We got Pastor Mark's parents responding in the altar call. That's very powerful. Click that one. Yeah. Okay. Now we've got um, uh, Zeke is there with his cousin. And they're both um, worshiping God together. I really like that. Tag that one. Okay. Now I got another pastor praying for someone at the altar call. Very powerful moment. Okay, double hands up. That's good. 
Pastor Mark comes over and starts laying hands on people, praying for people, and then praying for his son. His butt is in the shot. I don't. I really don't like that. So I'm waiting for the right moment where maybe he's angled in a different way. Or see, Gabby's covering him now. So choose that instead. And then I think these are just like after. Oh, this. I remember this service. There was um a big blowout service, and then um. Uh, it was like an hour or two after the service had finished and um, uh, everyone was still worshipping. Um, so yeah. All right. Now, once I've got to the end, I can tap on the three on the top here, text, attribute, metadata, and done. Library filter. Click on three and then it filters out all of those pictures. So it took from 800 to 65. Awesome. Now, what do you want to do is go right to the top and then what I do is Command A, select all, right? And then on the preset right over here, press user presets. And I have this favorite preset called Global Stage, Crispy and Bright. Now I've got a whole bunch of different presets here that I've used for many different things in many different situations. Like for example, this ZZ, these are my, um, my black and white filters. I got these um, things named after these big cats. Now, uh, yeah, you can create your own custom presets, which is just a recipe for, you know, uh, all of your exposure, brightness, contrast, things like that. But this global stage, the crispy and bright setting, the select few that I only ever use, right? So this crispy and bright, click on that, apply it to all. And now what I need to go and do is actually go through and just double check the, the color and the brightness and things like that. So I'm gonna actually start here with Jared. Now, uh, what I would do first is press W for white balance and then click on his white t-shirt. Now, I got a great reference for a white t-shirt there which resets the color. Now, what I can do is press shift on that first one, go develop settings, sync, check none, white balance. Now, I'm gonna sync that white balance across all of those different pictures. Now, I don't know if you saw that picture before, but this is what it was before. See, the color is completely incorrect. Now, that's what I've, I've done. You'll notice I do this a lot. I, I zoom in right on someone's face and fill their face to the entire screen. Now, what, what this does is it makes sure that I uh, set the exposure correctly for the subject. The subject in this shot is that person's face. Now, look at that picture. That is just so crispy, so perfect, right? Now, what I'm gonna do is uh, go to the next one, have a look, and do the same sort of thing, uh, and just expose correctly for there. Um, now, for Gabby, for example, it's a bit too bright on her face. I'm gonna bring that right down. Now, I've, I've made that whole scene too dark, so I would probably just do it like this, drop those highlights a little bit. Now, the key thing, what you gotta do is make sure that you don't overdo it. Now, you could easily do it like this, and I've seen so many people, um, you know, just ruin photos because, uh, yuck. Um, yeah, it just, it's gotta be subtle. It's gotta be subtle. Now, Jared's photo. Now, this is probably too, too big too big, so I'm gonna probably just um, bring it in like this, right? Now, uh, I'm fortunate to have a high resolution camera, right? So, now, that's good. Now, what I gotta do is just go through these pretty quick and um, just boost up the exposure. With these LED things, I just do this from the grid, right? Uh, just helps me get, get a bit of an overview. Now, you'll, you'll see I just uh, did uh, exposure and then just drop the highlights just uh, one click right and um, I can just see it from from this grid view that, um, it's just like that but one thing is uh, it's a little bit wonky and then um, so I press R for resize and then just do a little bit of a, you know. now I'm gonna select that Jared photo and then select onto all of these Ben photos press command S S which brings up that synchronized thing again. 
to synchronize. Uh, and it's just gonna sync that white balance across all of those different things again. Now that was a really subtle change, but I think it's a lot better. Um, and um, I think I'll just drop down a little bit because I've got white in the picture. Okay, now the picture of Mouse and Mux. Mother. Cut. Okay. I, and I'm, I'm flicking between these different things by going G for grid and D for develop. I'm going into these different windows, right? Now, a lot of a lot of the time I, I do this, I, I go really hard on the on the slider there and then just pull it back. Um, now, for these different sections where I have the same shot, so I'm going to exposure and then just drop the, um, uh, drop the highlights. Pressing R for resize. Rotate that a little bit. Now, yeah, it just uh, really freshens up that thing. So I can see that Julian here is overexposed, and this is actually more of what he looks like in real life. Now, this is kind of look out of alignment there with Gabby on the side. There you go. So just bring that in. And then just see if I can sink that across there. So it's really important. Uh, see, that one didn't work, right? Because I changed the settings between the two. Now I can go to the resize, bring it back out. Uh, yeah, it's really important to just um, know all of the keyboard shortcuts. So what I'm doing is clicking on the first picture, shift to the end picture, and then press D for develop. Um, go in and um, just sync and then it will sync across all those different ones right and then this whole section see all these pictures are the same right so what I'm gonna do is um, boost up the exposure drop down the highlights see the before and after right really easy sync those things move on now um, what I do is do stuff that thing sync these ones what you could do is go into every single photo press M Add one of these gradient filter things, boost up the exposure for this, zoom in, you know, zoom in, have a look at this one, worry about how it's slightly out of focus, but then really who cares? Like, is, is everyone gonna notice that on Instagram that the picture's slightly out of, out of focus? No. Uh, do I care after this? No. So, yeah. I don't know. It's just very important to just go really fast and, um, just uh, get it right in camera and then see what happens afterwards. Okay, now, see I did that first one and then synced it across all of them. Now, sure, there's a slight things that are maybe wrong with this picture if you really want to get technical, but whatever. Um, all I want to do is communicate that we had a great night, you know, it was a great powerful evening, wide angle shot to show that people came, at, came to church. Set this, this up and then try and sync all of those. Did that work? Yeah, right. Okay, now I'll sync all of those ones. Try to sync all of these ones. Okay, these ones are a bit too bright. Now, okay, let's clean that one, sync that one. That one is way too much. Right. Yep, okay, now I'll sync all of those. Yeah, a lot of this is trial and error and see if um, things worked or didn't work. See, I don't like that one now I zoomed in. So, it's two, hit it. Now, something weird's happening. Oh, the highlights are too low. So, yeah, I was trying to put them right there. Okay, now I'm clicking on this series, sync them. Now select all, right click, export. Now I'm gonna put it straight into the downloads folder and then save it as 2022-0101 Sunday service. Uh, custom name called Keenum City with the extension afterwards. JPEG, I go about 60%. sRGB, uh, 3000 width, 
resolution 144, sharpen for high, and then press export. Now, once all of those are done, put them onto Smug Mug, and then we're ready to go. Now, like I said, a lot of those different things that I did, uh, if you're trying to look at it really technical and be like, wow, he just did, he forgot about this thing, or I didn't do this thing, or I would have done it differently, that's fine. But the key things that I'm trying to do here is speed up the process, do some batch editing. The key things here that I've done is used presets, flagged in camera beforehand, and yeah, just making sure that I'm uh, copying, pasting, and syncing these things across uh, multiple sections. Another thing that I try to do is edit in a batch sequence. So when there's a whole series of the same pictures, edit one, and then select them, and then paste that across all of them. Now you can do a lot of that from that grid view, where you can have a look at the overview and just do it really fast. But it does take time to learn and it does take a lot of skill. So practice at it and then see how you can get better over time. I'd love to help you. If you have any questions, please reach out to me. But that's basically how I do it every week. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how you can improve your uh, process over Lightroom.